Hello everybody and welcome to Exoset the Exo channel. Today I have my Deus Ex Mankind Divided review. And this has been a long time coming, mainly because this game is incredibly long and I really did feel like I needed to play through it twice to sort of see and experience everything that this game has to offer. And if you, for those of you who don't know, this is a sequel to the previous game in the series, Deus Ex Human Revolution, which really sets up the majority of the story that this game continues. Now, even though it is a sequel, you don't really need to play the game uh, previously to understand the story. There is a nice 10 minute video within the menu that will um, tell you exactly what really you need to know from the previous game. Uh, but for you diehards, I would recommend playing it just because then you get to experience everything and all your choices kind of seem to make more sense. And speaking of choices, uh, much like the previous game, it starts right off with you in a mission, giving you the whole, well, you know, you're on a mission, do you want to be stealthy or lethal? Lethal? Do you want to take people out from afar or close up? And it's that kind of thing that really pushes Deus Ex uh, into a kind of game that you really do feel like you are making choices, even if they're just for different gameplay variants, but actually adjusting the story to the choices that you make. Um, so, you know, the the beginning mission is definitely a tutorial mission. It lay down, it lays down everything you need to know about controls and the different mechanics, different things. They even have these really nice little sort of uh, simulations within the mission itself. So when you can say yes, I want to do a simulation so I can try out all these different things that you just taught me, but don't have it count towards me uh, for the actual mission. And like the previous Deus Ex game or or any Deus Ex game, you have a multitude of abilities that you can upgrade and that your augments, because uh, in the world essentially it's way in the future, the idea is that um, human evolution has gotten to the point where we can now create artificial limbs, organs, etc. that enhance um, every, everyday humans into almost superhumans. And you, Agent Jensen, uh, basically find out that you don't need um, Neuropazine, which is a drug that prevents people from having augmentation symptoms. So when someone gets an augmentation, their body kind of tries to naturally reject it, and so they have to take Neuropazine. So basically, anyone who gets augmentations is now a slave to the drag the drug Neuropazine. Something I really want to show real quick here. Here's an example of where you pick something up in the game world, and it's asking you to scan it with your phone. As we all know, any of these things is kind of stupid. I, I I understand it probably wasn't the game developers that needed to put it in. Probably Square Enix. But at the same time, I just think those need to be done away with. Most of the time, if you're going to give me some little free like wallpapers for my phone or something, that's fine. But if it's kind of like integrated into the game, I really don't like it. So back onto all the sort of powers and everything you have. Like the previous game, all the things from the previous game are there, but it does follow the sort of Metroid style of, okay, here's all the setup, the tutorial, so you get used to it by, but by the end of the mission, you lose all your powers, quote unquote, and you gain them back. Luckily, it doesn't leave you completely out to dry, where it allows you to pick a few upgrades when your upgrades go away, so you don't really feel like you're repeating everything you did in the previous game. But after a small setup and everything, it uh, sort of starts off the the big old story that Deus Ex is known for, of a world, almost dystopia world, that is controlled by the government or controlled by an Illuminati group. You're not really sure, and it's it's a lot about kind of that uh, sharing of information and espionage and everything. But you, as Agent Gentian, you're now a member of Interpol and you're into uh, sort of investigating all these different hacktivist groups or uh, straight up terrorists that lead bombs and everything. In fact, um, after the beginning of the game, it, it never really connected with me. I understand the implications and the social commentary it's trying to say on the world, but it never really connected with me emotionally until a little bit into the game where there's actually a bombing and you go over to uh, help a child that's 
crying out and you lift up some rubble and you find the hand of his mother and she dies unfortunately and you sort of get that feeling of like even though this whole game kind of represents a economic uh, behind the scenes government that this really does affect the person on the streets these are the people that are actually getting affected by everything that's going on behind the scenes um, but what I really loved about this game specifically is that it really does truly give you that choice of how to go about what you want to do. So Deus Ex games are known to have multiple paths to be able to complete one objective. And you know before they usually range from like, okay you can go in stealthy and you can go through a vent, you can knock people out instead of kill them. But now in this game, they really kind of took that to heart, and I truly believe like every single mission objective I ever had, I would always be able to look at the situation and really tell like, okay, so I could do this or I could do that, and there's a very long list of things that you could do, um, not only in terms of, you know, uh, physical pathways, but messing with the AI, messing with your powers, and you almost kind of make your own fun in the game by... Uh, playing with all those different things within the sandbox. And the world you're in, um, it's it's believable, I mean you, it's not, the graphics are good, don't get me wrong, everything looks beautiful, but I never really felt like a great sense of place, I mean I understand this is supposed to be in the future, but I never really felt uh, attached to the world necessarily, it was just the, the corridors, the blocks that I was walking through. But I much prefer uh, their system of uh, sort of a hub system with different large maps within it instead of uh, too much travel to one big area to one big area like in the previous games and you you do go to different areas other than the main city that you're in for different missions but like I said they're, they're segmented off into different missions and that really kind of uh, that helps with um, sort of getting to know and understanding the main hub world that you're in and besides the main quests there, or missions I should say for this kind of game, there are a lot of secondary missions, much more than the previous game, and much more impact, and that's one of the main reasons I had to go through this game twice, because I actually missed a lot of things, like one of my favorite side missions was a murder mystery, and you uh, have to go around picking clues and everything. The, the payout at the, at the end isn't the greatest, but it was still really, really good playing that, and I love it when games mess with murder mystery kind of elements in games you wouldn't really suspect it. Um, the, a lot of big features of this game, again, are just your... I, I kind of like to compare it to Bioshock in the sense of like you're going around in these different worlds and you can pick up and everything and there are RPG elements. Um, and that can get a little tedious. I have to say like after a while I get really tired of every new area I go so I'm like alright well because I'm gonna need probably some items I'm gonna have to go through every single locker blah 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 and you don't have to you really don't there's a lot of choice in this game but that's just the way that I play games because uh, usually at the end of the day they usually the items that you find are pretty useful uh, for here for example is a social augmentation where you d you don't have to buy this augmentation but if you do um, a lot of uh, I want to call them bosses in the game you talk to and you're basically trying to convince them to do what you want them to do and this is kind of fun I, I really enjoy this kind of stuff because I'm the kind of game that if I can go about not killing people then talking to them convincing them sort of stretching my intelligence I really enjoy it and hacking has been somewhat improved it's similar to the previous game but uh, they definitely made it feel better on a controller um, as I played most of this game on an Xbox One just because I'm, I prefer the Xbox One controller. Other things about this game, they do have this other mode, which is like a, which is what do they call breach mode? And it's a very sort of, uh, it's if you ever remember Metal Gear Solid One and the Metal Gear Solid One VR missions, it very much feels like what the VR missions were to the main game of Metal Gear Solid One, where you're put in this sort of artificial environment that you have to collect information on servers um, and they're all sort of just environments where you would test your abilities and test your knowledge of the game mechanics and everything like that but behind it to sort of give it story and everything they made it feel a lot like what Watch Dogs was where it was like an hacktivist group where you're trying to get the information from the, the big baddie government or whatever it's fun but it never really caught me 
I I much prefer playing with the elements of the game within the main story themselves because because there is a lot of game here. Like I said, I played through the game twice to really feel like I experienced everything. Um, and there's some missions that you will miss by choosing certain ways to play the game. There are missions you will gain. So again, I really recommend you do. So I would say I give this game a good solid 7 out of 10. I de definitely recommend you rent it, buy it if you're into the Deus Ex games. And I think this is a great improvement and I hope to see more from the Deus Ex world. And I'll leave you with this, unfortunately, and I guess funnily, you are a vampire because they don't have any reflective mirrors. Thanks, Exoset out.